we were talking about power um, in the previous um, video. Um, we're carrying on from here. Um, power is everything. If a country has got power, they progress. They can double their they output. can double their output. Productivity becomes very high because you work twenty four seven. And it's very good. So let's carry on from the power base. Yeah, yeah. But I think be, be, before we even carry on, we have the capability, we have the ability, we have the the the, the sort of material, the resources, and I would say we have the sunshine twenty four seven that we can harness. I, I I just can't believe it. We can harness solar energy, energy. We, I, I don't think we should even suffer when it comes to power in Africa, in Ghana. By now, we should have solar-powered factories, solar-powered houses, and everywhere solar because the sun is mm -hmm. on free mm -hmm. from God. We ha have it. So, uh -huh. so why do we still dwell on hydropower and all these powers? Mm -hmm. We have, because, we because, have solar. Because what you why can't we do something and what? i think i heard that the government of mpp is trying to organize something i don't know but maybe um second chance will prove it we don't know yes yes because uh, obviously as we discussed four years is too short a time for you to have an impact it is that is period unless of course you are so bad and, unless and, of course and you're I, so bad i think the political system in terms of democracy is continuity because everybody knows very well that you can't do anything in four years. That is why there should be continuity. Policy amendment, constitution amendment, that will reflect all that continuation of projects. So when the next person comes, he continues. When the next person comes, he continues. So whether four years, two years, one year, we all doing we the same need thing. To have a and, we, and the country have a vision, not one individual vision. The country itself have a vision of maybe a fifty year vision of maybe hidden industrial, That's right. um, you know, a, a government or a country. So there should there should be that structure, isn't it? Correct. And as I said, four years isn't enough. So when there is that structure, when there is that amendment in the constitution, then everybody that comes in will continue from where they left off. Correct. So, for example, with the body that I was suggesting, this Transitional Government Finance Bureau, mm -hmm. this should be a body that should have all the listings of Ghana's assets and resources. They should have it. It has to be a listing, mm -hmm. right? Because, you see, the, the problem is that, so, for example, when I wrote that paper on the um, economic recovery program and the structural adjustment policy and how it affected the balance of payment of Ghana. Mm -hmm. I was looking at issues like the import and export historic data. Mm -hmm. And I was also looking at the you know, Ghana reserves. And in that, I, I came to the knowledge that you know, Nkrumah purchased a whole lot of properties here in the UK, obviously including the bank where we are. Imagine where we are in the city, mm -hmm. the bank. Ghana always had a, a place at Hanover uh, mm -hmm. Square. Uh, then obviously the embassies. There were so many properties for Ghana. But you see, these things are not listed. You've got to have it listed. Because when you list it and it disappears, mm -hmm. you can trace it. Do you have the evidence that they are not listed? They are not listed? Um, I don't have the evidence, but what it is is that from what we see mm -hmm. it appears to me that i mean if you leave it for example i had a privy of seeing these things because not only i i work in the bank and not only uh, not, not only that i had the opportunity to be doing this dissertation which then gave me that awareness mm -hmm. that oh okay we have we have like you know foreign reserves as in currency and also valuation of properties all comes in are you with me mm -hmm. And so it may be the fact that it's not just here in London, but the Kwame Nkrumah may have done stuff in, in the USA, may have done stuff in Germany, different countries. You need to have a bureau that will have a list of what Ghana has, right? In terms of its assets and also its finances, right? Because the problem that is halting our development and it, it, it should stop 
This is the time. But I heard that. Hmm? Bro, it, hmm. it, it needs to stop, Mr. Eric. Because when that thing stops, you are going to see the growth. It needs to stop because the stop go, stop go. So NDC comes, pioneers a project. And, and I'll tell you this. When, obviously, after Chairman Rollins had come into Democratic Party, he left in 19, uh, he left in 2000. 92 to 2000, that's another eight years on end. When he left, Ghana was actually bankrupt. Right? Let me how, how did he reach that stage? <laughs> you know, tell. because I thought initially you were saying that he was doing good. No, no, yeah. As a military man, of course, of transformed course. into a politician. Uh -huh. I thought you said yeah. that he was doing good. Yeah, he, what happened? He, what I'm saying is that he has some good projects, you know, obviously showcasing Ghana well, you know, he was leading well. But the point is that at the point when his government came to an end, the country was bankrupt. Because when you go into the national press, all the money is gone. Please, how, how did it vanish? Please, let me <laughs> tell you this. So when you go into the national government, the coffers now, nah, they, they're gone. They, they will take it, you know, like ministers, everybody will take whatever they want to take. So when you take over... But, but I think that he was the one killing people for... <laughs> Being corrupt. What happened? Well, that that how, I, how did it? That how did it I, I'll leave for the ordinary Ghanaian to 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 judge that. But the reality, I'm mm -hmm. talking about the reality, mm -hmm. was that the country there wasn't much left. Okay. So then you have the John Adekun Kofor government comes to power, and that is when Ghana went epic. And I I actually vividly remember that in those times I was having a debate with a good friend of mine who was an NDC guy. I'm traditionally NPP, but I like to be, I'm not just a, a, a blind follower of a party. I am NPP, but I want to be objective. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? If they are not doing the good work, mm -hmm. we have to be able to say something. Are you with me? To say we support your party. Everybody's got a party that they, 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 support. they support, but they don't follow the party blindly. Look at the works that they are doing. You know, is it benefiting the country? Ultimately, we all want to see Ghana grow and develop. That's what we all want. I support NDC, and I'm going to say it, uh, the reason. I have my reason. NDC? Uh, no, MPP, I'm sorry. I have my reason. Traditionally, fine. But also, it is that freedom of speech, that freedom of will to do whatever you want to do without the fear of intimidation mm -hmm. the freedom of enterprise mm -hmm. are you with me yeah. and you, you, you can see that when npp is in power mm -hmm. Ghanaians will wake up and everybody wants to do something because people don't fear people don't feel <coughs> intimidated that maybe when they said something the next morning they will disappear are you with me we know in the history of Ghana that um, maybe in the times when everything was very chaotic, probably from the 1979 to the 2000 period, it, it, it was a time that people could say things and they would disappear or something could happen to them. And so I think at the back of the minds of people, this has become the vision when NDC comes into power. Everybody withdraws because you don't want to be part or get involved are you with me? Because even if you have something, you, you fear, if you had a business, you fear that your business could be, uh, you know, somebody could hijacked. be like, hijacked. You see, so when you, when you look at, um, when you look at uh, the NDC administration, the sort of things that you, you get is that people become cautious. They don't want to say anything. Enterprises are not too sure if you're not politically aligned to that particular But do you have the party. evidence of that? And fairness, the, you know, fairness, because I think both parties sometimes when <laughs> this party comes in they strive for or you know try to um, break down the previous parties you know mm -hmm. jobs and, and businesses and it's been going on for quite a long time it's mm -hmm. not one party is like they're doing one, it. when they're doing it to each other they're doing it. you know they try to strive for you know just yes. close down your business 
so that they will have the, 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 the financial muscle to, 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 to know, muscle the next guy and, 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 and do Correct. whatever they want to do Correct. so that they will always be on top. So I think they've been doing Correct. it. That, it, is, it is evident, but we are talking about more like the ordinary Ghanaian. Thank you for watching this series. Watch out for the next one. Please don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Thank you for watching. Yeah, welcome back. Um, we are talking about um, development. Development. Um, general overview of development. Yeah. So, what were you so saying? as I was saying, I agree with you mm -hmm. that you know at, at a sort of high level, mm -hmm. there is that always. It's a once again. This is a failure in the structures and systems. Mm -hmm. So where we're talking about a transition, we're talking about putting something in the constitution mm -hmm. for that continuity. Yep. This transitional uh, bureau that I was suggesting, it should be an institution that is uh, giving the powers to investigate, mm -hmm. to prosecute, mm -hmm. and to recover mm -hmm. anybody, any government official that have taken advantage of Ghana's resources. So what happened to MPP's special prosecutor? Because they they organized this thing and promised the ordinary Ghanaian that you know once we are in power, we have created um, a special prosecutor that will look into these areas and then those that are found guilty will be brought to justice. But to be honest, we haven't seen anything going. Yes. So, is it? So, that, that's exactly what you are so, talking about. So, yes. So, you but see, it, you we didn't yeah, see anything. You see the idea. Is and when there. you ask questions, they said, you don't have any evidence to prosecute them. Where do we go? Where, where, where mm -hmm. do we stand? So, this is, uh, um, this is some of the issues that we discussed earlier mm -hmm. that you got to see it through. So you've got to have the vision, you've got to have the idea. Mm -hmm. But as part of a good leader, you need to also see the see idea it. too. Yeah. And this, uh, this body that I am recommending, mm -hmm. it has, a, in terms of its judicial process, so we've got a standard ju judicial process of doing things, and that is why nothing really works. Mm -hmm. It's too slow. But where there are issues concerning the nation, Ghana. So let's say I come into power in Ghana and I take uh, some Chinese deal, 20 billion or 2 billion, and I pocket 500 million of it in my pocket. And then the, the bureau is tracking me. So the bureau gets all the documents, blah, 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 knowing that maybe I took two and I accounted for 1.5. When I leave office, this there has to be a special court you no need. immunity. That's what I'm uh -huh. talking about. You need to have your, because, your standard court, which everything mm -hmm. is low. But also where things are of government concern, because every government has got a time frame, as you, we discussed earlier, mm -hmm. in which to do things. You need to be in a position where you have a judicial system, a special judicial system, mm -hmm. that can work in a much quicker, you know, bring your evidence. Bring your and the evidence. evidence will be there because the systems have been you know organized. And what I want evidence. to I, I want to you know say before you carry on, mm -hmm. in the US and the UK, in the developed countries, democracy is you know is not a problem in terms of their structures and their systems. The reason why the um, developed country do have immunity when it comes to precedence is that. Their system has been designed in such a way that no president can be corrupt. You can't take money from anywhere. That's it, because it's accountable. And Africans, we are trying to copy them, but our systems have been broken. It's, it's a broken system. So we should have the no immunity to work. We should revise. We should amend. We should reorganize our constitution so that if a president knows that he is not immune, it means that when he's uh, out of power, when he's not in office, he'll be brought to justice when there's any misappropriation of funds, yes. when there's corruption. And if they put that in place, I am very sure that this corruption is going to be cut down to a minimum. At least there's going to be lobbying here and there, but the corruption itself is going to, is going to go away because... 
in America and UK and all these areas, developed countries, there are a few here and there lobbies and all that that come in and you know get few bits and scraps. But the system is designed in such a way that you can't mm -hmm. you can't <laughs> be corrupt. You can't take money yes. from anywhere. Yes. So it, we in Africa, we we, 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 we we have a long way to go. We have a long way to go because we are copying the democratic people in, in the West, but we haven't put our systems in place to be able to keep all that corruption down. Mm -hmm. So there should be no immunity for anybody. No one is immune to anything. Mm -hmm. So if you are an ex-president and the, the, the bureau, as you're saying, investigate you and they think that, your, 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 your cabinet was very weak and very corrupt. They will, they will put you behind bars. That's how it works. And if that really happens, then it means corruption is going to go away. It's, yeah, yeah, Otherwise, yeah, we right. have a long way to go. That's right. Until and unless we put systems in place, place you know, maybe, maybe you can maintain the immunity aspect of it, but when you put proper structured systems, systems in place, just that allow. will curb corruption. It, it just doesn't, doesn't allow you. anybody to you take money it. anyway. And if you do take it, it will be recovered. You see the recovery process. So, for example, I'll make an example to you. So, we obviously, I'm going to come back in terms of we're talking development, but just to give you an idea. So, for example, you have a under this last NDC administration, it became apparent that a lot of banks had failed mm -hmm. right that that was my problem too i, I guess yeah really because failed. because the what the ordinary Ghanaian doesn't understand and the evidence that came <laughs> on there too is <laughs> unbelievable yeah what ordinary but Ghanaian. nobody has been imprisoned till now what Ghanaians don't understand is that you know it's tax, working for it's, it's taxpayers money so when a bank collapses um obviously the share big shareholders and all these big boys directors the money ends up in there whatever ways they've invested it and this is money from ghana then the bank of ghana takes over um number one these failures have happened have happened because it is a failure of systems and procedures and processes by bank of ghana policies <laughs> mm -hmm. they in effect, they are the ones that we should be. They, 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 they should be in Bank of Ghana, trying to find out who presided over, over this. Over what? Because what if you have proper procedures and systems uh -huh. in place, and you're auditing banks, because they are they are regulating the other banks, and, isn't it? And if you're auditing them, mm -hmm. then what is the problem? If then your external auditors, mm -hmm. even if internal auditors uh, do dodgy stuff, external auditors will pick them up. Mm -hmm. Bank of Ghana being the overall uh, boss overseeing this. If this thing has happened under their nose, that is a problem. And this is how Ghana loses money because these monies are ended up in the hands of... They are not productive money anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's monies that has been taken. And we now go to... So for example, 21 billion, right? Mm -hmm. 21 billion new Ghana city. It's gone into the consolidated uh, uh, banking uh, set, consolidated bank set up by Dr. Ennis Addison, the current governor of Bank of Ghana, mm -hmm. and they put 21 billion in there to rescue depositors. To revive it. Yeah, to rescue them, to to give that confidence, and that is a very good thing for the governor to do. Mm -hmm. When obviously we realize that these banks, the collaterals, that the uh, capital adequacy ratios, they don't even have it. Uh, they, are, they are bankrupt basically so the Bank of Ghana it is their responsibility to step in even though I think it's also their fault to allow this thing to happen under their nose mm -hmm. but if a new governor is coming Dr. Ennis Addison and he says okay I'm going to take all these banks that are failing and I'm going to uh, recapitalize or put money back in to allow depositors and investors to have their monies back that is the correct thing to do 21 billion new Ghana city, right? This is about, I think it works out to be something like uh, probably, yeah, in terms of billions of dollars, in terms of, yeah, let's say 21 divided by six. Uh, I think I've done the figures here, bear with me a minute. 
let me just check and tell you the the dollar equivalent because I I definitely put these figures up. Yeah. Yeah, let's have a look. Just do a very near minute. I'm going to do some small. Okay. Yeah. So, as we're waiting for the figures to come out, thank you for watching this series. Watch out for the next one. Please don't forget to share, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like. Thank you for watching.